Hello and welcome to a full walkthrough of how to use the task automation pattern inside of money.com. The basic idea of how this pattern works is you have a work activities board, which is sort of the main driver for uh, creating task templates. And the idea is that with you have a specific work activity that needs to go through a series of stages denoted here by these, this blue progression. Um, these are very broad stages that can be customized to specific work uh, scenarios. Um, but this generally covers most things. So an example of what this is could be used for is um, inside of the uh, accounting or CPA world, um, you'd have something like I need to uh, file to, uh, file the quarter one taxes for a given client. So the idea is you have an automation feeding into this where it creates these activities on a cadence. And then once they're in here, it'll then predefine the information here. So you have your work activity, which is let's say um, Q1, taxes or file q1 taxes file q1 taxes that's our goal or that's our main activity in here we'll have an owner who's responsible for doing that making sure that that gets completed and then a series of stages that is just right now set up as a upcoming meaning it's coming down the pipeline and not currently working on it and then you have a due date we want to finish this by a specific date i'm going to say that the due date is going to be the 30th of april from there you'll select a client it's going to be acme and we can then create the tasks for this. When I press this button, it will create a series of sub items that are broken down into different stages that match these stages here. So there's a separate board called task templates where you can pre set up predefined templates um, in here. Right now there's only one and this is the task templates one, but this would be like file Q1 taxes templates or file uh, quarter, quarterly taxes template. Um, and then it would create a series of tasks here. Now you can see that the tasks have been created. It's just miscellaneous one through six. And in here, it um, sets a default status. In this case, they're all waiting. You know, we can't begin them yet until something has happened. Either somebody manually changes the status to to do, then people can be working on the activities um, or by changing the status or stage to the relevant stage. And then we'll automatically kick off the tasks there. So for example, if I click and mark this on to do, and then work on this task and one finish mark is done you can see the activity progress progressing here at the very top um, as this goes forward there is automations behind the scenes that run through and set up due dates this is a special due date pattern that i'll show in a few minutes here basically the the there's two main options for the due dates one is either based on the target date which is this parent date up here the target due date or there is a task due date is based on when the task was created. So if this was created today, and it didn't specify when to set the due date, it would specify the due date as today. So it's April 4th today. So these two tasks have are set up as today is the due date. The idea behind this is that you can set up your, you can predefine your patterns for how, for how, uh, how you want to create your tasks to complete a larger activity. In this case, file Q1 taxes, um, and then backdate or a forward date, what the due dates are going to be so that you can accomplish this parent goal by April 30th. So all these dates are based off as April 30th day. For this first task, you can see this is backdated by five days from this due date up here. So it's, if we go behind the scenes, we'll see a five there. Again, I'll walk through that in just a minute. It also predefines task descriptions. If there's any task descriptions or additional information that needs to be um, associated with completing the task. And then it gives you an idea of when you're supposed to do these tasks. You can also set the owner pre beforehand. You can set it up either as a role, i.e. whoever is the parent here is going to be the owner down here, or you can set up as a team, like for example, marketing team, or you can set up individual people. So you sort of have three options right now. Now, when you change the stage here to, let's say info gathering, it will move the activity down to the in progress. And you'll see that the status down here has changed to to do. This changed to to do because we have uh, begun the first stage, which is the information gathering. And so we can now begin working on the first task of that first stage. Now, once I complete the task and I move the stage to the next space, which is preparation, you'll see that the preparation status changes from waiting to to do. There we go. And then when we complete that task and we move to the next stage, it will change this status to to do as well. So the idea here is that as the activities progress forward, you are batching your activities or uh, tasks into these different groups. And so 
uh, within a given group, you can have people working on those things simultaneously. Um, but you make sure that everybody's done before you move on to the next group, or at least most of the main activities are done. So the idea of the owner up here is making sure that they're watching the activities that are happening and that they're progressing the stage forward as these stages are complete behind. Um, and so this is a pretty advanced automation, um, but you can also add some additional pieces in here where it's just say, once all of the preparation or once all the assembly stages, stage activities have been completed, then automatically move it to the next stage. Um, that is also an option in here, but that's not currently active. So we'll see in a moment, this will change to to do. There we go. And again, you can see the activity progress bar up here. See how many activities are in are completed, how many are to do, how many are waiting. And as you work on the progress, uh, this uh, task, there are different statuses. To do means, sorry, waiting means you cannot work on it yet, it's upcoming. To do means you can work on it if you're assigned to it. And progress means you have started working on it. Done means, of course, you're finished. And then blocked, you specify this if you are running to an issue. Now, when you change it to blocked, it'll automatically move it into this blocked group. Um, this is important to sort of raise a red flag and say, hey, I, am f I cannot move forward because of some reason. And so somebody has to then specify why it is blocked, and then the owner is going to be the one that moves it out of the blocked back into the in progress to let everybody know that back on track. There's a health status here to also help with that. It's basically a, a thumbs up, good, thumbs sideways, or we're at risk and then thumbs down, we're off track. So that allows you to be able to quickly review, and if you, especially if you have a lot of work activities in here, be able to review where things are currently at. And that is the full walkthrough of how the work activities side of this um, works. And once you, of course, complete the acti work activity, everything's finished, it'll move down to the completed section, and is now a historical activity and archived. So it remains down there. And that is the full walkthrough of how the work activities board works inside of Monday.com. Now, behind the scenes, there is a task templates board, which is a very simple board where you can set up as many task templates as you like. In the other board here, I only selected the task template one, but I can create additional patterns. This is going to be new task template. And this is really where we get into the weeds. Uh, the default grouping here is just activities, but if you have different types of work, you can hypothetically group them into different areas. In this case, I just want to keep it very simple with one simple template type. Underneath the template, we can set up a series of tasks. These are our activities that we're going to duplicate once we initiate that inside of the work activities board. In here, you can specify the task name. You can specify the star status, which just means when you create this task, what is the status going to be when you begin? And there's three basic options. The default is waiting, meaning you cannot work on this. Um, the second option is to do, meaning you can work on this as soon as it's created. And the third option is ready to assign. Sometimes you don't know who the role or the assignee is going to be until you've actually created the task. Um, and so you set this as waiting to assign and then set a manager to then reassign it to somebody else once the task has actually been created. Or it could be a role that also um, uh, specifies or a team that specifies who's going to be in that role. Task descriptions just allow you to add additional information on how to complete the task. This is where you can get into standard operating procedures and add a bunch of information. You can add links in here. You can add additional documentation um, to be able to complete these tasks uh, successfully. One of the keys here is to keep the names very simple. So the sub item name should be very, very clear, very simple. And the task description can then go into further details if needed um, to, on how to complete the task. Really, if it's a really efficient system, you shouldn't really need to use this task description very much. You should only use it as additional callouts or uh, footnotes uh, in case you need to do something more specific. Over here, we have the role. Again, you can assign a person, you can assign a team, um, or you can assign a role. So um, the first one is uh, you can assign a person, which means if I select, in this case, Gideon Harris, I can assign, when this has created, it's always going to go to Gideon Harris. You can assign a team, which just means we don't know who's going to work on it, but we know which team is going to work on it. And when you assign that, it'll assign that same team. And the third option is you can assign a role. Now, roles are very specific, and they're only for specific configuration patterns. How, do you, how the roles work is on a separate board. Typically, it's an organization's board where you're managing client details. You can specify different roles for that client. Um, uh, in the previous example, I used uh, the bookkeeping and accounting world where you were filing quarter one payments. And so an example here would be you would have your um, 
uh, primary account manager maybe overseeing the activity of this specific task, or maybe it's your fund accountant um, that needs to manage that specific task. So you can assign different roles, and those roles are specific to clients. It's a very, very specific use case that's pretty rare, um, but there is functionality that can do that in here. Next, we have stage grouping, which just means when we create the task, what group do we want to create it in? And we have that same loop regression pattern. Not applicable, not applicable means that it just won't do anything at all when the task is created and you'd have to specify a start status to make sure that it gets created and assigned to somebody and that they can actually begin working on it. If you don't specify this, the task will just remain, will not get kicked off when you change the status because there is no not applicable status or stage inside of the work activities board. You can specify any grouping here. You can you can overlook certain groups depending on the work activity. You may, you may not want all of these things. You may only want info gathering. You may only want info gathering and review or delivery or you know any of these. You can do any combination. The idea here is just to give you five different options to be able to select or put the tasks into these buckets to simplify it. Simple Finance allows you to be able to do more things like creating dashboards uh, and be able to review the information at a higher level. Um, beyond that, the tasks should be pretty specific about what needs to happen and the grouping, task grouping is just to help you, or stage grouping is just to help you categorize those into pretty broad buckets. It doesn't need to be specific because the tasks will define the specific activities. The stage grouping is just to group them together in some loose arrangements. So you can change this. It doesn't have to be every single color here. It can be in two multiple colors. You might say most of these are info gathering and then the last two are actually going to be delivery. So when I create this pattern again, if I want to go in here and click create, it will create task template again, but this time it will set the tasks to be um, info gathering, info gathering, info gathering, and then delivery, delivery. So I'll take a second where it's a run. We have info gathering, info gathering, info gathering and then delivery delivery there we go so you can set up whatever pattern you like i'll note that this is a template so it's taking a copy of the template and pasting it in your work activities board and then finally this is the most complicated part of this uh, this is the task due date and task due date type so again as i specified before you can specify whether you want this to be based off of the target due date which in this case is the activity due date up here this is the due date of the parent and you can specify and say this is going to be before due date, before target due date, um, or after task creation. Before target due date just means this is going to be five days before target due date. As we saw over here when the task was created, the target due date is April 30th. Five days before April 30th is April 25th. So it's based on the target due date and it's um, subtracting the days before that. Um, this just allows you to have more complicated uh, calendar systems to create a series of activities and make sure that you backdate everything appropriately to get it done in time. And this is really important when you have a lot of work for a lot of clients or um, important scheduling things. Uh, I've seen this pattern used in um, uh, marketing agencies is pretty common where they'll have like a newsletter that they need to go out or a blog post and they'll backdate the things that they need to do, have due dates backdating to when it needs to be published. So that's a good use case of when you would want to use this before due date. If not, you have this after creation. After creation is the default, which just specifies when the task is created, how many days after that do you want to set the due date? So for example, we have task three here, which is one days after the task creation. So if we go over here, it will take today's date, which is April 4th, plus one days, which in this case is um, April 5th. So April 5th is the due date. You can see one day, it's April 5th. Now two days here, this will be April 6th, and then zero or blank will be just today's date. So you can see uh, April 6th for the two days, and then zero is just a default to two two days date. So if you don't do anything, it will always default to today's date. And then if you do add days, it will take today's date and add several days. And that is the full walkthrough of how the work activities board works as well as the task templates. 
um, inside of the money.com workspace. This is a custom automation. This is not default or native to money.com. And there are additional patterns working within make.com to make all of this happen. This might sound like a lot of information and there is quite a bit of information, a lot of thought that went behind this. Um, this is only sort of covering the, the, the very surface level um, uh, patterns behind this, um, but this can work at scale. This can work in many different use cases. Uh, this is more just to show you what's possible and a bit of idea, give you a little bit more context of how it works. Um, and you can apply this into different areas. The whole purpose of this is to create standard operating procedures um, that will work in different spheres of your business. And the, the main target use case that I described here is for the CPA and bookkeeping world, in this case, filing the quarter one taxes.